Hey there, folks. This is Pop Culture. I'm Alex Pop, and happy Jurassic June to all of you. This is my return to Talking Things Jurassic Park. I haven't made a video about this franchise in almost two years. Since it's Jurassic June, I think now is the time for me to address the new Jurassic movie that is in the works right now and is scheduled to be released in July of next year. Whatever we're calling it for the time being, whether it's Jurassic World 4 or Jurassic Park 7, or as it was rumored to be titled, Jurassic City, although those rumors have apparently been shot down. We know absolutely nothing about the plot just yet, but the first piece of information we knew that came along with the announcement of the movie is that the script is being penned by Jurassic franchise veteran David Kep, the writer of the original movie and The Lost World. So before I get into all the things that are really dragging down my excitement for this new movie, I will get into the things that I do think are good news in a vacuum, in isolation, and on its own, all terms that I will probably be using quite a bit in this video. And the news that David Kep is writing this movie, I do think is the first piece of good news. It seems to evoke the idea that they're wanting to take a back-to-basics approach with this new movie, stripping the franchise of the over-the-top action element that was pretty prominent in Dominion, and taking it back to the more horror-oriented elements of the first movie, The Lost World, and even the opening and second half of Fallen Kingdom. And I guess I can look forward to the possibility of another Jurassic movie that's as quotable as The Lost World. Saddle up! Let's get this movable feast underway! Then again, we could instead get a lot of lines that are quotable in the opposite way. David Kep was, after all, the author of this doozy. What about my generous proposal? Are you in, or are you out? It's you who's out, Gobby. Out of your mind. Regardless, whatever little bit of hope I got from that first announcement started to dwindle when it was announced that the director of this movie was going to be David Leach, who is not a bad director by any means. He's made several fun movies. Most recently, I really enjoyed The Fall Guy, which, actually, now that I think about it, included a clip of Dominion at the very beginning when talking about stunt people. The problem is that he makes action comedies. His style is not at all fit for a Jurassic movie. However, the following announcement came about five days later that David Leach was being let go as director, reportedly over creative differences. And so that brought my hopes up again. And a few days later, we got the announcement of the new director for the movie, and that is Gareth Edwards, who I must say is a much better option. Rogue One, I think, is Gareth Edwards' best film. And even with films of his that I don't love, like Godzilla 2014 and The Creator, they still always have this dignity to them and this really awe-inspiring scope. So I'd be down for seeing a Jurassic movie get that kind of treatment. So Gareth Edwards and David Kep, pretty good team-up. And as we speak, announcements of the cast members are really pouring in. The leading roles are going to Scarlett Johansson and Jonathan Bailey, and in a supporting role, we have Rupert Friend, who played the Grand Inquisitor in the Obi-Wan Kenobi series. And currently in talks for a supporting role is Dev Patel, known for movies like Lion and Slumdog Millionaire. And reportedly for a villain role is Coleman Domingo, who played Private Harold Green in Lincoln. And I know he's going to be portraying Michael Jackson's father in the upcoming biopic about the King of Pop. And just as a side note, that movie I'm really looking forward to. The world deserves to see the truth of what Michael Jackson's life really was, because he is innocent. And also, there have been unconfirmed reports of Tobin Bell joining this new Jurassic movie. His most iconic role is, of course, John Kramer in the Saw movies. And I could see him being, like, the highest up on the totem pole of bad guys, albeit a chief bad guy who can't move too well, sort of like the villain version of Benjamin Lockwood. And most recently in talks to join this movie is Mayershala Ali, an actor known for his Oscar-winning supporting roles in Green Book and Moonlight, so this would be a wildly different movie for him if he takes it. So with a pretty good writer and director team-up and a solid cast, whether confirmed or rumored, where does my concern with this movie lie? Well, there are a couple of things. The first being just how rushed it seems Universal is to get it out there. The announcement of a new Jurassic movie came a whole lot sooner than I was expecting, and the movie is scheduled for release July 2nd of next year. 
I think this stems from a couple of things, like that they want to restore some of the reputation of Jurassic Park. I mean, they lost a lot of fans after Dominion. They may have lost a few after Fallen Kingdom, but most people, even those who didn't like the movie, were still really on board with what it was setting up, and then Dominion didn't follow through on it. And also, there's another dinosaur movie coming next year, just over a month ahead of the new Jurassic movie, and that is David Robert Mitchell's new 80s thriller, Flower Veil Street. I think it may bring about some competition for Universal, because it's not going to be another small-budget independent movie like David Robert Mitchell's prior works. It's got $85 million behind it, it's being filmed in IMAX, and it's got the well-known leads of Ewan McGregor and Anne Hathaway. It's for those reasons that I'm getting a sense of desperation from Universal, to restore the reputation of their franchise, and to remain the top dog when it comes to dinosaur brands. But that's not even the biggest reason why the hype for this movie is kind of low for me. It was never the possibility of someone like David Leitch directing. It's not even how rushed it feels like Universal is to get this movie done. It really all comes down to just how much damage Dominion did. As everyone who's been following my channel for a while knows, I had never been more excited for a movie in my life than I was for Jurassic World Dominion. By all accounts, it had everything going for it. The ending of Fallen Kingdom shifted the status quo, building up the game-changing premise of dinosaurs spreading across the 21st century world, in turn bringing the ending of Michael Crichton's novel onto the screen on an even grander scale. There's no escape from the fallout of all the past tinkering with nature. We as a species have to deal with it. This was my Infinity War cliffhanger. But alas, none of that was explored in Dominion, and instead we got a movie about bugs causing crop shortages, and the dinosaurs are just roadblocks along the way. I made like a seven-part video series going over all the ways that Dominion failed, and even ended it off with a video explaining why the disappointment of the movie affected me so personally. And I must confess, I may have let it get to me a little too much. Actually, most people who saw that movie did say that they saw where I was coming from. Although, I do have to address another comment I got on that video, which said, Anyone else getting strong Stephen King's misery vibes off this guy? <laughs> That's the funniest damn thing I've ever heard! I love a good roast! <laughs> I mean, I might have had one or two fantasies about breaking Colin Trevorrow's ankles. Okay, not really, but yes, I allowed a simple movie to break my heart and crush my soul. I'm owning it. But in all honesty, though, no movie did disappoint me on such a personal level as Dominion did. The only movie that I'd say came closest was Toy Story 4. But the thing is, with that movie, there was an easy solution. Toy Story 4 never happened. I always saw Toy Story 3 as the perfect send-off to this three-part story. Why stop now? It's different with Dominion because Fallen Kingdom needed a faithful follow-up. It brought forward all these interesting and complex issues that needed a resolution, that needed a remedy, and Dominion just ignored all of that. And yet, at the end of that movie, it acts like something has changed, but nothing has. In reality, it just leaves us in exactly the same place we were when the movie started. What seems to be like the go-to defense for the Locust plot is that it feels relative to something that Michael Crichton would have written. Okay, but how does that make it any more of a flowing progression from what came before? It'd be like if in Avengers Endgame, instead of the Avengers fighting to remedy their failure and undo Thanos' world, there was a completely new threat that emerged, albeit one that is adapted from the comics, and the entire movie was about the Avengers fighting off that. And then it ends with them saying, Oh yeah, Thanos' world? Eh, you know, it ain't that bad, we'll live with it. And then the defense for this was... Well, that new threat, it's straight out of the comics, so it works. The only explanation Colin Trevorrow has given is that this is simply the direction he wanted to take the movie in, which I find to be a very insufficient response, considering how he himself consistently maintained that the dinosaurs were going to be the big issue. 
And why shouldn't they be? We're now at the point where dinosaurs are becoming commonplace in the human world, bringing new meaning to the very title Jurassic World, and yet the actual Jurassic World is really irrelevant to everything going on. Now, I have seen the argument a few times that dinosaurs existing on the mainland isn't really anything that exciting, because, you know, we share a planet with bears, lions, sharks, alligators, and snakes, and it's not this everyday problem. Point taken, but really think about it. These are creatures that are bigger and more dangerous than any animals that we've gotten used to sharing the planet with. When they suddenly emerge in our world, there are going to be new threats to mankind, and probably a lot of ecological imbalances. Now, I might, might have not made such a big deal out of it, if it wasn't for the fact that the movie's preceding Dominion made a big deal out of it. Dinosaurs and man, two species separated by 65 million years of evolution, have just been suddenly thrown back into the mix together. How can we possibly have the slightest idea of what to expect? Yeah, he sure got that right, because no one would have expected that it would all be hunky-dory. Were it not for the cataclysmic events which overtook them, it is entirely possible that raptors rather than humans would have become the dominant species on this planet. Taking dinosaurs off this island is the worst idea in the long, sad history of bad ideas. This is what it would have been like. What? Dinosaurs never went extinct. People just wandering around, scared all the time. People wouldn't be here if they never went extinct. These creatures were here before us. And if we're not careful, they're going to be here after. We're going to have to adjust to new threats that we can't imagine. We've entered a new era. Welcome to Jurassic World. So you may ask, why then does Dominion's failure hinder my excitement for this next movie so much? I mean, because so little got accomplished in Dominion, they could just go right to dealing with those new threats, right? I mean, it could just go forward a few years at a point when dinosaurs have multiplied and further populated the Earth to the extent that they become a big enough issue that they can no longer be ignored. And yes, that could happen, but the problem with doing it at this point in the series is that Dominion left all these interesting character arcs that Fallen Kingdom set up in the dust. When people defend Dominion saying that there's more to these movies than just dinosaurs, yes, they are absolutely right. It's also about the people. But the thing is, by drawing the focus away from the dinosaurs and this new world, Dominion did an irreparable disservice to the people who helped bring this world to what it is. Dr. Henry Wu is a really big one, because he had been with all this tampering with nature since the very beginning in 1993, and all 25 years of that has amounted to this dinosaur crisis, and yet Dominion decides to focus on a completely new mistake of his. Again, it's all about the locusts. And also, Claire and Owen, perhaps to a lesser extent because they were duped into helping bring the dinosaurs to the mainland, but they still did express plenty of regret for being a part of it at all, and they fully understood the dangers that were coming from it. Claire, you press that button, there is no going back. And of course, the one that everyone talks about, Macy, who willingly pressed that button, setting half those dinosaurs free. And ever since Fallen Kingdom came out, I had gone on record to say that that was actually really good writing. But understand, one of the reasons why I had no problem with that writing decision is because I naturally assumed it would be a no-brainer that the next movie would deal with the ramifications of that. Two things can be true at once. One, Maisie is not a cold-blooded killer. That really shouldn't need to be said. And two, that impulse did play a role in putting the world in the state that it's in, and that shouldn't go unnoticed. You can go back and watch my entire playlist of videos I made leading up to Dominion. In every single instance where I defended Macy, I never once said that she ought to just move on feeling like she's 100% off the hook. And yet in Dominion, that's really how it is with all three of them. While the only thing dino-related that Claire and Owen are drawing their attention to is just human exploitation of dinosaurs, whether it be poaching or illegal breeding farms, Macy is only concerned about being let out of the house more, taking no notice in the part that she played in all this. 
Now, one person suggested to me that it seemed like Claire and Owen were sheltering her from what she did, and that idea would make sense, and I could totally understand Claire and Owen never bringing it up to her face, but for her to just be completely oblivious to all this and only care about having more freedom, I'm sorry, that's just terrible writing. Now, as some of you may point out, the Macy Lockwood adventure books do touch on this, and yes, there are sections of those books that do address how that choice she made affects her. There's a part in the Yosemite Six when Macy attends middle school and she's in the cafeteria, sitting around some other girls who are talking about all the movies that are going to be made that feature, like, pteranodons breaking into the windshields of planes. And while the nature of their conversation is more lighthearted, Macy is sitting there thinking to herself, yeah, a pteranodon really could do that. And one of my favorite parts of both books is in Off the Grid. During this time, Claro and Macy are trying to find Blue and stick a tracking device on her. And in Chapter 12 of this book, Macy overhears Claire and Owen talking to the local sheriff about how they deal with these new predators. They tell him about in 1995 when scientists brought wolves into Yellowstone National Park, and it created great benefits for the ecosystem there. This is a moment when Macy begins to see a ray of hope, wondering if perhaps the dinosaurs she saved could possibly have any similar benefits. And she wonders if maybe she feels the same way that those scientists felt. Like, did they worry if they were right to bring those wolves into Yellowstone Park? And had they been wrong, what would they have done about it? So moments like that in those books that take us into Macy's head are really good. Although, the books never really do explore exactly what those scientific solutions are. And while I do think those books are pretty good for what they are, Macy's overall goal in them doesn't really go very far beyond just making people see that dinosaurs aren't all that bad. I mean, she straight up says that the only difference she sees between the dinosaurs and the modern-day animals is that we created them. And to that, I have to object and say that there are plenty of notable differences, as I've already gone over in this video. And also, there's one part in the Yosemite Six where this small herd of dinosaurs that are referred to as the Yosemite Six, which consists of three apatosaurs, a parasaurolophus, a gallimimus, and a nearsighted ankylosaurus, are all rampaging through this town. And Macy's worry here is that we have to get them out of here before the poachers arrive, because people are going to alert these poachers. And I'm like, uh, yeah, that and... There could be mass casualties and property damage from three apatosaurs stampeding through town. You ever think of that? And besides, the thing that makes those books feel rather insignificant is that I'm not even positive that they're meant to be hard canon. The Jurassic Wiki site says they are, but then again, no one watching Dominion would get any sense that there was anything more to Macy's story before then. That's what people do. How would I know what people do? The only people I've spoken to in the past four years are you both. Also, Dominion makes it seem as though Macy has never had any close encounters with Blue, while the books tell a different story. Regardless, that inner turmoil very clearly should have been a focal point of Dominion. I mean, remember that shot at the ending of Fallen Kingdom, when Macy, Owen, and Claire are all staring out ominously at the Pteranodons, and they're like, Oh dear, what have we gotten the world into? All this time, were we supposed to interpret those expressions as just complete and total indifference? I don't think so. That's ultimately why it's hard to get excited by the prospect of this next Jurassic movie centering around this global dinosaur crisis, because it's very likely going to focus on completely new human characters, and so these people that we don't know are the ones who are going to clean up the mess, and as this is all going on, Claire, Owen, and Maisie are all sitting around a campfire making s'mores for all we know. So even if this next movie is amazing on its own, I just don't see myself being able to shake that thought. It just feels like it's going to be skirting around this massive void that Dominion created that can never be fixed. Anyone else feel this way? Because I haven't seen a single other person talk about this, so let me know, please. It's also a shame, too, that in all likelihood, we're never going to see the OG cast dealing with this new world. I mean, it's a world crawling with the thing that they hoped they'd never have to face again. And so, for them to go head-to-head -head with it, that's a really cool idea, and it's 
really what I thought that Dominion was going to be about, and yet, again, they were all wasted on this dumb locust plot. Especially Alan Grant, although granted... No, no pun intended. Although granted, that movie did make some good development for his character, like him finding a reason to finally let go of paleontology, which I would argue is one of the few things that Dominion did okay. But still, he really doesn't do a whole lot for the story. Yeah, if Macy was the personification of the dinosaurs in Fallen Kingdom, then that role absolutely goes to Grant in Dominion, because he's just kind of hanging around there as a necessity. I mean, come on, there's more that you could do with Dr. Grant in this world. I mean, he's the man who so accurately foresaw the attack patterns of raptors and the fact that the T-Rex's vision was based on movement. you think he would really come in handy in this world that everyone's trying to deal with. But alas, none of that happened, and it probably never will. Sam Neill has even come forward to say that he's pretty sure he's done. So, what do I think would be the thing to do from here? Well, my pipe dream would be to scrub Dominion from canon and make a new Jurassic Park 6, but out of the question. So the next best option that I can think of would be to make this movie a prequel or midquel. Maybe something like that movie that Clayton Fioriti proposed about the time that uh, Hurricane Clarissa hit Isla Sorna. This is a reoccurring thing that has satisfied me with franchises that have crashed and burned at a certain point taking the series back to before the mess was made. A very good example of this would be Bumblebee. After Transformers The Last Night really screwed up all the continuity, Bumblebee decided to take things back to when it was simple, in fact, before any of the franchise had even gotten going, in 1987. And yes, I know the direction that Transformers Rise of the Beast took seems to indeed suggest that they decided to retroactively make Bumblebee a reboot, but, I'm sorry, Bumblebee will always be a prequel in my mind. There's just too much in that movie that directly links it to the 2007 film. And also, bringing the spotlight back to Tobin Bell, Saw 10. Because if you can't win over Saw fans with a movie that takes place at a time when John Kramer is dead, no problem, just take the series back to when he was alive. I think it really paid off making Jigsaw into an anti-hero, and Saw 10 proved to be a pretty good fresh start. And even, in my opinion, the Obi-Wan Kenobi series. I mean, Lucasfilm lost all control with the sequel trilogy. So after that mess was made, I was really satisfied with the Kenobi series set between episodes 3 and 4. I tell you, I had my doubts as to how that story would work going in. But in the end, it all came together. And I would even go as far as to say, the Kenobi series enhanced the experience of both A New Hope and Return of the Jedi. In fact, Jurassic World Dominion was released to theaters at the time that each episode of the Kenobi series was being released, and as I was dealing with the post-Dominion depression disorder, the last two episodes of the Kenobi series really made me happy. So going a similar direction with the new Jurassic movie, making it a prequel or midquel, I think that is the most viable option at this point. It's unknown if that will be the case, although... A new set photo from the movie is in Thailand, which is a very interesting location. In fact, that's just where my adopted sister is from. And it's where I plan on going on a mission trip at the beginning of next year. In that set photo, we see a grill on a fishing pier. And this location in Thailand is being used to fill in the setting of Suriname, South America. Whether this is a place where dinosaurs now live or if it's actually earlier in the series and this is like where the characters leave to go to the island, remains to be seen, but could be something? I don't know. But if that doesn't turn out to be the direction this movie takes, I really don't know what exactly can be done moving forward. I mean, maybe it's a good thing that my expectations are in the toilet right now, but as it stands now, that really is why it's hard for me to get really pumped about this movie. I will say, though, one thing that it should do, just scrap all the animal rights stuff. I was completely on board with it in Fallen Kingdom, because I really dug the ethical question of how much responsibility humans bear for these creatures. And I was okay with it, too, because taking the dinosaurs to the mainland was never in question for any of the protagonists. It was just Eli Mills who wanted to do that. But when dinosaurs are roaming amongst us and we're having to deal with them now... 
that throws in another element. In addition, I'm in the process of watching Chaos Theory on Netflix, and I gotta say, as of right now, I'm not too impressed. I'm honestly becoming really jaded when it comes to animated Jurassic Park. And even in that show with dinosaurs on the mainland, the only idea it can still yet seem to come up with is just more human exploitation of them. Now, Colin Trevorrow still has involvement with Chaos Theory, and as far as I know, he's not going to have any involvement with this new movie, so that, I think, is a good sign. Just please scrap that element of human exploitation of dinosaurs and bring back more of the man-versus-nature aspect. Which, I mean, again, David Kep is coming back, so and he, and he wrote the uh, first two movies, so in that aspect, I do feel fairly confident. But it is still just the thought that it's leaving all of those interesting character arcs that Fallen Kingdom set up in the dust that's really keeping me from getting legitimately excited for this movie. Now, make no mistake, I want to love what comes out of this franchise. Jurassic Park is the reason I love movies, and Jurassic World is the reason I'm on YouTube. But in terms of the notion of this movie really getting the series back on track and fully winning me over, well, I'll believe it when I see it. So, what are your thoughts? How do you feel about what we know about this new movie so far? And do any of those points that I made bother you at all? Whatever it be, let me know in the comments. That's a wrap. Thank you for watching. I hope you enjoyed this video. Like and share. Subscribe for more. This is Pop Culture. I'm Alex Pop. Out of all the Jurassic Park sequels, my favorite was Fallen Kingdom, and one of the best aspects was the identity of Maisie, the little girl living with Benjamin Lockwood. Towards the end, we learned from Eli Mills that Maisie was a clone of Lockwood's daughter, whom he created because he never got over her death. It's a whole new idea for the series. It adds so much perspective to the ethical dilemma. And it drove her to free the dinosaurs into the world that I was so surprised and excited. And the next movie, you better believe, I was first in line. It was at the midpoint in the film. And there was Maisie in Dr. Wu's lab. And it's there he tells her that she wasn't really cloned, just immaculately conceived by Lockwood's daughter. And all the people in the audience went, aww, when finding out that she had a loving mother. But I didn't aww. I stood right up and started shouting, This isn't what we were told last movie! Have you all got amnesia? They just cheated us! This isn't fair! Benjamin Lockwood cock-a-duty made her!